That's right, folks. A record 111 container ships are floating off California's busiest ports, despite Biden's 24-7 schedule and looming fines. That's right. He's going to start fining all these companies out there because they can't get their products unloaded and moved. What is going on? Like we need something else to really make things even worse. The number of container ships stuck off the coast of Southern California reached new records on last Tuesday. I mean, it's just unbelievable. That's according to the data from the Marine Exchange. A total of 111 container ships are just bobbing around at sea at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. They're waiting to be docked and unloaded. That breaks the previous record of 108 vessels back in October. I think it was October 21st to be exact. Two ports remain clogged despite efforts to speed up the process of containers amid in a surge in consumer demand for the goods. And then the White House, you know, they did this announcement, you know, that, you know, they want around the clock scheduling. They just wanted that started last month in October. And now they're looking at doing these fines starting on the 15th of November for these containers if they're not being moved. Basically, folks, we're in a global supply chain crisis here. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this stuff out. It's caused by the fall in shipping demand during the early days of the pandemic back in 2020 when it first hit and everybody like bled the stores out of every product known to man and then turn around and we can't get the products back on the shelf at full capacity. And that was the surge at the end of the year was left with all these big delays and blockages across the whole world. I mean, the whole world is dealing with this nightmare. The chaos continues. And that's why I'm telling you that you have to be prepared, folks. It's not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse. Containers have been stacked up on the docks for weeks. They're just sitting there waiting to be unloaded but a shortage of dock workers truck drivers long delays everything else it's just it's all coming together as one perfect storm if you really understand what i'm saying the size of this log jam is just unprecedented i mean before anything happened and and the pandemic came to town uh the ports and stuff basically they never had a backlog greater than 17 ships and now we're we got 111 setting out there last month two ports said that they would begin fining shipping companies a hundred dollars a day for every container that was left on the docks that the ports started collecting data at the start of november and would begin charging the companies on november 15th shipping firms have three days to move containers if their next step is by rail. So they have three days to get it on to a train to move it across the country. Or nine days if the next step is by truck. But the problem is, is we're already short 60,000 truck drivers. So we're not getting anywhere. And experts say that, you know, these fees and stuff that they want to put in it will do little to resolve the port jams. It's, it's not going to solve the problem. It's just going to make it worse for us. Those fines will simply get passed into beneficial cargo owners who will, well, accept their rates have gone up. And then they turn around and they'll be charging us more for the products that are in those containers. So inflation is going to rise even more. These containers would move if they could, but it's just a combination of warehouse workers, truck drivers, and labor issues. Put them all three together and we have a perfect storm. What do they think? What is the, the outlook for us to get out of this shipping crisis? 
Well, when asked, the consensus basically says it will not be until 2023. And to make matters worse, experts are predicting that things are about to get worse and they may not get better until 2023. Surprising no one, right? I mean, come on. And it all started when the whole pandemic started. That was the beginning of the end of what we're dealing with here. Biden wants 24-7, right? He wants 24-7. He wants supports running constantly and everything else. He wants these goods being moved across the country 24-7. So he's trying to enlist anybody and everybody, every shipping company out there. He's trying to enlist FedEx and get them to move a lot of this freight however they can. He's enlisted the post office to try to get them to move any type of packages and anything else that they can move. And he has enlisted UPS to try to help to put all this together and try to make this better. But unfortunately, there's still just not enough trucks. You have all these companies that are trying to do these things coming into a very busy holiday season that's supposed to be predicted as one of the busiest shipping holiday seasons that has ever been. And now, you, on top of that, you want to try to move through these companies. You want to try to move all these goods from the West Coast to the East Coast. Does anybody else see a problem with this? You're going to be paying more. Things are going to get worse, just like what they are saying. And it's not going to get any better until 2023. And that is if we don't have any more problems or any more issues that's going to disrupt what has already taken place. It's only a matter of time, folks. The clock is ticking. This year, when the ball drops and it strikes midnight, and it's the new year, get ready to pay even more for everything that is out there. All these big CEOs are saying that they're going to be raising the price of their products and everything from food products, cleaning products, you name it, it's all going up. Now, I know that the federal government is trying to put these mandates in. I also know that as of Friday yesterday, so far, the courts have ruled that OSHA cannot implement anything until this has been further investigated, which is a beautiful thing because we do not need these mass mandates in and you have all these people that are willing and able to either walk away from their jobs, to strike, whatever they want to do. In the end, the only ones that are really getting hurt is the American people. You have people that are going to lose their jobs if they're fired. You have people that aren't going to have their jobs if they walk off the job. You're going to have people that if they're striking, they're not going to be getting paid. And in the same token, goods aren't being moved, services aren't being done, and nothing is taking place to help the American people. We're creating more problems than we're solving. It's a perfect storm. And I believe that this is something that the government would really like. They want to make a lot of changes, a lot of changes, and they need a perfect storm to accomplish their goals in doing what they want to do and exceeding their expectations of controlling everything. I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Keep prepping. Your time is ticking. You have until 12.31.21 at midnight. And then things change. Mm -hmm.